Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our communion service here at Robert Tabernacle. A warm welcome to everybody here present in the church, especially our Brockworth friends, and to those of you watching it online. And also a very warm welcome to our minister, Eric, who will be leading the service this morning. I'm now going to light the candle, which is a symbol of our unity with all Christians around the world. And the Bible is open, which is also important for us as a um, as part of our worship. Good morning. That's better. It's lovely to see you and to see so many of you this morning here and uh, we hope that uh, those at home and those across the world will be able to see what we share here today. The psalmist writes, Inside your temple, O God, we think of your constant love. You're praised by people everywhere and your fame extends over all the earth. You rule with justice. We are not able to sing, as you're fully aware, uh, so can we stand together? And the, uh, the, our opening hymn today is For the Fruits of All Creation. Let us pray. This prayer is, prayer is called, When I Cannot. Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. Help me in my despair. I love. Help me in my fear. I see. Help me at my limits. Lord, I am strong. Help me in my weakness. I am independent. Help me in my stubbornness. I follow you. Help me in my waywardness. I am enough. Help me to grow. Help me to be wise so that I am not deceived. Help me to ask for help so that I am not overwhelmed. Help me to question and test the claims of others so that I am not led astray. Help me to give so that I do not become hardened. Amen. 
And now let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. really is uh, lovely to see you and uh, some of you I've not seen for ages I can uh, I don't think I've seen yoga for gosh 18 months or more. that's what this pandemic has done and uh, today our theme is uh, it, it's about facing unbelief and this is uh, really where the church is in crisis in the world today because we are uh, facing a tide of unbelief um, so uh, I guess you can all think of something instantly that other people find hard to believe. Well, I hope so, because I'm going to ask you that. Yeah. Other people might find it hard to believe. Do you know, does anybody know the strongest wind that has ever been recorded? Nobody know? Okay. Well, this may be beyond belief. 235 miles an hour. 235 miles an hour. Do you think that's true or do you think I just made it up? It must be, it must be true because I've said it. <laughs> oh, gosh. See, that's the problem Jesus had. <laughs> yeah? True or false? What do you think? True. It is true. Yeah. Happened in Australia. Yeah. 235 miles an hour. Something that people might find hard to believe, apart from the fact that England won yesterday and a young girl went through at Wimbledon. Anything? Sorry? The resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. People say it can't happen. No way. Yeah. See, science has done a lot of that, hasn't it? Science. Science tells us all sorts of things and of course people look to science uh, as if science is truth because science is only the knowledge that we have now because uh, things that people thought about science uh, I don't know if you you know this but the the core of the earth has moved did you know that think that's true it is true <laughs> it is true Science is, uh, is showing us that. And, and what they're not showing is what the impact of that might be for the world. And we all, we all know uh, today is uh, Thankfulness Day. Did we know that? Really? Thank you, Teresa. I'm glad somebody keeps up with the news. Okay. Okay. People are being thankful for the NHS today, particularly. And uh, we, we've certainly a great deal to be thankful for there. People have been working very hard, almost uh, tirelessly, really. And um, some of our folks here have been part of that. And they've been part of the volunteer teams that have been uh, testing people uh, and uh, supporting them through the injection process. And some of us need support through an injection process. Because some of us are a tad afraid of needles. None of you, I'm sure. None of you. No. You don't worry about things like that. No. Okay. So what kind of things do you worry about? Ah, oh, nothing? Excellent. Yes, Dorothy. Oh, safety on the road, yes. Yes, whilst I'm about, that's a very good thing to worry about. Yeah, okay. Safety on the road. Anything else? Nothing else. Okay. Worry about the climate change. I think we should all be worried about the climate change and we should be thankful, shouldn't we, for uh, David Attenborough and all he's done in, in sharing with us um, the, the pictures of our planet and the things that are happening to it. And some of the results of those, we are 
seeing in the strangest of places. Uh, did you know that in Russia they've had an invasion of polar bears? True or false? Yeah, you're not so sure, are you? <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to sing now. We're going to sing All I Once Held Dear. And uh, uh, we could stand while, while we sing this, while we don't sing it. And then uh, our two readers for today are, are two Barbaras, and they're going to read for us. ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from, being, from becoming conceited because of the, these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Thanks be to God for this reading. The second reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13, and is from the New Revised Standard Version. 
It also follows after the healing of Jairus' daughter, which Dorothy read for us last week. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. The Mission of the Twelve Disciples Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve disciples and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put in two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Thanks be to God. Amen. Facing Unbelief uh, is the title that came to my head when reading the passage from Mark. This Gospel, believed by many scholars to be the first written, delivers on issues that may challenge belief. It has no birth story, and in the original text, no resurrection story. Mark wants us to face our unbelief and see where the life of Jesus takes us when he calls follow me. It is our shared understanding of that call that brings us together as church, and in this fellowship, where questions can be asked and faced, where possibilities can be held up to see, where no one has heard a louder call than another, here we join the Jesus of this day, facing unbelief. I want you to place yourself there. Now, the synagogue was a general meeting place, it wasn't structure a holy place as this, it was uh, used for religious purpose, but generally people met there. You can imagine the crowd, they didn't say, well, hang on a minute, have we seen him around the village? That's in the people's minds, when he begins to teach them. We may be surprised to learn that he simply brought a new possibility into their lives, by enhancing what prophets had shared before him. Well, yes, yes, we know all that, but isn't he Mary's son? He isn't an authorised teacher with the robes and the posture of a real teacher. And Jesus, Jesus, well, he understands and regrets just where they're coming from. And I had to smile when the Gospel writer says he could do no miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were healed. I wonder how many people would be pushed to the front if that was happening here today. And in some sense, and in some places and in some hearts, it will. But Jesus is reflecting the situation those who, uh, who knew him knew that he was a carpenter. He worked around the boats on the seashore mixed with fishermen who were very genteel, don't you know? I think not. It does make you smile. He worked with the fishermen and they became his first followers. And the second part of this reading is very appropriate for us just now as we look at our mission and recognise the need to revise it. The 
training method uh, used by Jesus is an interesting one. The sending out of the twelve may have us shaking a little, but every pair were told the same thing. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. Often in those days, walking from village to village uh, was really quite hazardous. Women rarely walked alone, and men feared robbery or attack by wild animals. A staff would be really useful. Taking no bread tells us that this is not a picnic. They're to be reliant on others for offers of food. No money to buy any. No bag to carry extra even if offered. Sandals are allowed, but only one shirt. Hospitality in those days was a crucial thing. It comes through as a biblical theme. Hospitality has us being ready to refresh someone who brings peace to our home, who comes with nothing to frighten us other than a call to repent and believe the good news. The news that the love of God is alive and well, believes in human worth and recognizes human frailty. Take nothing with you except who you are and what you bring. So when we see ourselves as worthless, we're to repent. When we see ourselves as hopeless, we're to repent. When we recognize our errors of judgment in doing wrong, we're to repent. Failings, repent. Meanness, repent. When we will not let anyone do anything for us, repent. Have that change of heart and mind. Allow yourself to admit you need to change. And what else do the disciples bring to the house? A power over evil spirits, influences that serve the cause of evil, can be overcome by the power of God in bringing about the kingdom of God. Repentance is heard, forgiveness offered, and change of heart becomes change of life. But in some sense, it's our turn now. We're the followers, and the message is unchanged. Kingdom values shown in our lives will bring very real change in the lives of others. Given the news in this week, we've got to talk about physical attraction and human failing. Common topics for the news of the world when it existed as a newspaper. And newspapers have very few, if any, echoes of forgiveness. Oh, how easy it is to stand and point at the one in the patch of light or on the shaky pedestal. How easy for us to know how right we are, how right I am in pointing. Later when Jesus tells a story about the speck in someone's eye and how easily we see it, he's bringing us back to this point, to take nothing with you. Overcome the power of evil by bringing the Spirit of God to where you are. In reading the Gospel of Mark, you'll be brought back to this point over and over again. In the figure of a naked Jesus nailed to a cross, we see the power of evil executed. That, the crucifixion of Jesus, is the cost he was prepared to pay to bring the message of the love of God and the hope of the kingdom of God to his nation. In the song, I don't know how to love him, there is a line, I never thought it would come to this. And I'm sure as we reflect on the last 60 or 70 years of church going, we're faced now with bringing about a new sense of mission which doesn't deny our local church history, but rather recognizes the call that came to our forebears and comes again and again to follow us. And it is a call that begins, take nothing with you, except to start. Rely on the help of others. May take us back into Refugee Week and the reality of welcoming those who, like the disciples, come in peace. Well, the elders here are working at the new vision, getting ready to bring that to you all in planning to be the church of the future. There will be many familiar things to leave behind. Now imagine meeting some fishermen on a country lane and asking them, um, what's been left behind? What's been left behind? I guess you'd get boats, 
nets, helpers, even fish. Even fish. What about the, the warmth of the wind on the sea? And the smell of the salt and the taste of the water? What about those things too? But if you ask them where they're going, they'll tell you, we're following Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next piece of music we have tried in church before and we tried it at a speed that few could manage. And so today I invite you to stand and not sing Vagabond. a little breathless doesn't it yeah I invite you now to
simply slow down. Begin to breathe gently. Breathing in slowly. Holding that breath for a moment and then breathing out. Just do that for a moment or two. As we come before God in prayer. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. As we try to quieten our minds in the busyness of our world, Lord, open our hearts that we may bring the needs of others before you. We pray for those who are experiencing tragedy today, the dismay of total loss, the despair of wretchedness, the shock of disaster, from Japan to Miami. We pray for those in emergency services who work against time to rescue the living and recover the deceased. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around and Lord we do give thanks for the NHS for the work of so many during this last 18 months particularly but we pray for those in need of healing today those who have faced delays in treatment due to the pandemic We pray for the people we know in our families, our circle of friends, in our fellowship here. We think of Brian Fletcher, of Jill and Bryn, of Carol Harvey. Terry Rohrbeck and John and Jack Miskimmon Lord may the things we do and the things we offer in support be a part of your healing We give thanks for those who can celebrate happy times, family times, meeting times. We think of Dorothy and Brian, Carol and Brian, for Jeanette in the early days of retirement, and in a moment of quietness, we bring to mind those whom we know who are not known to others here. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. We pray for our elders as they help us step into the uncertainty that is the future. As we heard today of the sending out of disciples, move our hearts to serve you today in our worship, our fellowship, our activities. We hold in our heart those who do the work of worship preparation, giving thanks that we're finding new ways to share the joy we find in Jesus and the love we find in a God who is faithful.
And Lord, remind us that you hold us in your hand. as we face the world and all that it brings to us remind us that we can lay those things at the feet of Jesus in whose name we pray Amen The table is open to all Before the festival Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room to share supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, and then broke it, saying to them, Do this to remember me. They usually drank a cup of wine after supper, and as Jesus took the wine, he again asked his disciples to remember him whenever they shared in fellowship together. We're in that time now, disciples sharing fellowship together. And we have this bread and this wine set aside for this purpose of sharing communion. Jesus knew his friends well. He had traveled with them, walked with them, talked with them, argued with them, shared with them. And he says, this is my body which is for you do this to remember me we'll share together when all have been served The body of Christ. When Jesus lifted the cup, he gave thanks to God for the wine, for all that it is and asked his disciples to share in it, to remember him, along with the bread. And so we will drink together when all have been served.
we share this cup of blessing. Holy God, we thank you for what you have given us here. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. We pray that as we go from here, we will serve you in the world, that the world may know you in and through Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing, Tell Out My Soul. We shall stand and not sing, Tell Out My Soul. And uh, after that, there will be a sung blessing this morning. Thank you. 